How dare you forget about the family reunion we're having this weekend? You know how important it is for us to see each other and catch up on things? You better not miss it or else you'll regret it. I won't tolerate any excuses from you. Hi, Laura. I haven't forgotten anything. I'll be there with Bruce as always. We wouldn't want to miss such a special occasion. Fine. Because we need you to help out with things once you arrive. Bruce must be exhausted from working so hard all the time. He deserves some rest and relaxation. We must have him take some time off and enjoy himself. Of course I understand. I'm always willing to help out others, especially my family. I don't mind lending a hand with whatever you need. But I'm not sure if I can do much this time around. I was hoping you'd understand. What? We can't be having that. I am your mother-in-law. You're not planning on disobeying me, are you? You know what happens when you do that. I won't let you get away with it. No, I would never. It's just that I'm sure you've heard about my pregnancy, right? I'm in my final month right now. The baby could come any day now. So what? Are you saying that you want to slack off just because you're pregnant? That's no excuse. You should be grateful that you're carrying our grandchild. It's a blessing, not a burden. Please, let me explain. Last month, I had to stay at the hospital for a while because the doctors were worried that I might have a condition called threatened premature birth. It's when the baby tries to come out too early. It can cause complications for both me and the baby. So far, it seems like everything will be fine as long as I make sure to keep myself healthy and rested. I'm sorry I can't help you out as much this time, but I hope you understand. It's for our child. I want to make sure he or she is born healthy and happy. I don't understand a thing you're saying. You're just making up excuses. Like you're trying to get out of your responsibilities. How lazy and selfish you are. But Laura... You're married to Bruce. You're now Bruce's wife and my daughter. And we need all the help we can get. I will not have someone like you just laying back while her husband and mother do all the work. You didn't get married to slack off, you know. You got married to serve us. I won't allow such a thing. Now, do you remember your role here in our family, young lady? Or do I need to further explain myself? I think you're misunderstanding me, Laura. Of course I'll be helping out, as usual. I'll do everything I can. But there's going to be a limit to how much I can push myself this time. So I just wanted you to know that I might not be able to help you out as much as last time. It's for the safe delivery of our child. We don't want anything to happen to her, and we don't want to push her luck either. I mean, I don't know what I'll do if something happened to the baby. I'm sure you don't want her to be in harm's way either, right? It's none of my concern. Nothing will happen to the baby as long as you make sure you're being responsible enough. But in the off chance you do harm the baby, well, I suppose sometimes you're just unlucky, but it's not that hard to get impregnated. So I suggest you just get pregnant again. We're still expecting to see our first grandkids someday. And just because you might fail as a mother once, doesn't mean that we should also be deprived of our joy by not being able to meet them anymore. Hold on, Laura. What do you mean sometimes you're just unlucky? It's not just about bad luck. It's about being careful and making sure the baby is safe. I hope I'm wrong, but you sound as if you think our baby is replaceable. This child will be the one and only first grandchild. At least that's what I'm praying for. And that's why I'm asking you to understand, so that you might go easy on me. Go easy on you? Are you implying that I'm pushing you around? That I'm being unreasonable? Well, you kind of did do that before. Remember that one time when I didn't exactly do as I was told? You shoved me to the floor and I got bruised. I know you're not always like that, but on the off chance that you're not feeling too cheerful, well, I don't want to risk it. That's why I'm telling you about my condition and hoping you'll understand. The doctors told me that I really shouldn't push myself. That includes carrying heavy objects and running around for errands. I'm sorry. I can't help out much. 
but please, I need your understanding. And I said that I don't understand. You're talking nonsense. You're trying to manipulate me. You're trying to get out of your duties, make me look bad, and ruin our family reunion. You're also trying to make me angry. Well, you've succeeded. You've made me very angry. And you know what happens when I get angry, don't you? But, okay, what's throwing you off? If you tell me, I'll try to explain it in more detail. That's not what I mean. I mean, I don't understand why I have to listen to your ridiculous demands. Ridiculous demand? So what if you're feeling a little sick? Every woman goes through pregnancy. You know, but they don't make a fuss about it. And they certainly do not neglect their role as a wife and mother. They handle it. Why should you get special privileges? Just because you're on your last month of pregnancy? I say you're overreacting. Or perhaps even a bit narcissistic. You spoiled brat. I don't think I concur with that. Like I said, I have a condition. Maybe under normal circumstances, I could do a little more. But I was hospitalized, and the doctor explicitly told me to be careful. Please. I swear I'll do my usual chores once I deliver our daughter. It's just this once. Please, Laura. No, I stick to my word. When I said that, I don't understand why I should listen to your moaning. It's not like you even visit that often. You're a guest, and we're being kind enough to welcome you. Shouldn't you be on your best behavior? If I were you, I'd be making sure to do all the help I can. As I previously said, I will. I'll do everything to the best of my current abilities, but there's a limit and I can't do as much this time. Then why are you trying to say that I usually make you do more than necessary? The audacity. Hear yourself. I can't believe you'd insinuate such a terrible thing. No, no, of course not. It's just that I care so much about our baby. I don't want her to have any complications. It's also the first time I got pregnant, so I want to be extra careful. I want to make sure everything goes fine. Please, you've been pregnant before. Why don't you understand? Oh, so now I'm the bad guy here, am I? I get it. That's what I cannot stand about you. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll make sure to teach you a thing or two about manners. Be ready. I'm looking forward to this weekend. What do you mean? Please, I can't handle too much this weekend. I've told you this countless times already. Laura, are you listening? I'll be home soon, my sweetheart. How are you feeling today? Make sure to stay rested and take care of yourself and our baby. As usual, I'll be taking care of all the cooking and cleaning chores, so you don't have to worry about anything. Is there anything you want to eat tonight? If not, I'm thinking of making some delicious lasagna with cheese and meat sauce. Bruce, can I be honest with you? Sure thing. Is something bothering you? It's about this weekend. I'm kind of scared. This weekend? So you're worried about that visit to my parents' house? It's alright. It's just a small family reunion, so it shouldn't take too much of our time or energy. Of course, if you start feeling unwell, you could always take a rest in the guest room. And you don't have to help out around the house like usual. You always do so much for us, but you shouldn't feel obligated to do that. Especially this time when you need to focus on your health and our baby. Maybe, but does your mom know that? Why wouldn't she? I told her that you are 9 months pregnant already and she went through the same thing when she had me. So she should understand how hard it must be to carry a child in your stomach and deal with all the discomforts and pain. Besides, there is also that talk that we had at the hospital. We should tell her about that too. I'm sure she'll take good care of you this time and be more considerate of your needs. I told her about it a few minutes ago, but I don't think she gets it. Either that, or she's not too happy about the idea of me taking a rest. There's also that incident that happened before, so I'm starting to feel afraid. You mean she pushed you to the floor? I don't know about that, Emmy. She said it was an accident. That's what she told you and your dad. But did you see her apologize to me after that? 
I don't want to make any accusations, but I think she knew what she was doing. The doctors did tell me to stay rested, but I'm worried that if she thinks I'm slacking off, she'll start being violent again or hurt me or our baby. Well, I see your concern. I don't know what actually happened between you two, but I guess it's true that you got hurt that day. We don't want that to happen again. Although, if you're feeling scared, do you want me to tell my mom to be extra gentle around you and not to bother you with any chores or demands? Will you? That'd be wonderful, Bruce. Anything for you, my sweetheart. Remember, no matter what happens, I'll always stay by your side to help you out and protect you. Besides, we can't risk our child getting injured. Better safe than sorry. Make sure you don't get too stressed either. If there's anything else you need from me, just ask. I'm so glad you're such a supportive partner, Bruce. Thank you. I'll do my best to keep our baby safe. You little brat. How long are you going to keep me waiting? Get back here right now. Those dirty dishes are piling up in the sink and they need to be cleaned. Do you think you can just leave them there until tomorrow? Move your lazy feet. Laura, enough is enough. Don't you have anything else to say to me? Are you completely oblivious to the consequences of your actions? What are you talking about? If you have something to say, then say it already. Stop beating around the bush. I've already told you that I have to take care of myself. I even reminded you as soon as we got here. But you still treat me like your personal servant. You force me to do most of your household chores. And that might not have been so bad by itself. But then, as soon as I sat down on the couch to catch my breath, you kicked me hard in the stomach. How could you do that to me? I'm speechless. You've lost your mind, Laura. You're truly insane. Well, if I'm insane, then you must be delusional. What did you say to Bruce behind my back? Because now he's under the impression that I've mistreated you. What kind of nonsense did you invent, huh? What was your motive for doing such a thing? I didn't invent anything. I just told him the truth about what you did to me. Do you even comprehend the situation? I'm in the hospital right now. Did you see the horror on everyone's faces when they witnessed what you did? They were horrified because you had the audacity to slack off during our family reunion. And now you're being whisked away to the hospital. So I guess that's even more time for you to avoid work. I didn't do anything wrong, Missy. You should be ashamed of yourself. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Do you actually believe your own words? Even after everything you've done, you don't even offer a single word of apology. I don't think you feel any remorse at all, do you? I'm disgusted. I knew you had a grudge against me, but I didn't think you would be such a terrible person. I see how it is. You're pointing fingers at me again. You think I'm the one who's at fault? Well, let me tell you something then. Because you're just being lazy and selfish. Really? What's the matter with you, Emmy? I've never encountered such an ungrateful, selfish girl in my life. Anyone should be apologizing. It should be you. Think of all the trouble you've brought upon me. Think of all the stress I've been enduring. Being pregnant is no excuse for slacking off. Not in my household. No one gave you the right to take a break. If you didn't want to be kicked in the stomach, then you shouldn't have been lazy. You had it coming. That's it. I've had enough of this. That was the final straw, Laura. I thought I should be nice to you because you're my mother-in-law. But I was mistaken. I will never forgive you for what you did, Laura. I hope you regret your decision and all of your previous actions because you're in for some bad news. What? Why would I need your forgiveness? What are you up to now? Laura, you kicked me in the stomach when I was carrying a baby inside me. We had to call an ambulance. I'm in the hospital because of your violence. But not only are you not concerned about me or offering me an apology, you're blaming me for it. That's the truth. Don't act like you don't know that. I see you still stand by everything you've done. What's worse is that you haven't even bothered to check on the baby's condition. You're a monster. I'm sure the baby is fine. You'll never see her again. Oh, well, 
it's not my fault, and you'll make sure to tell everyone that it's not my fault. Don't misunderstand me. The baby is fine, but you and I are done, and so is the baby in you. I can't risk it. She's safe and sound? You nearly gave me a heart attack. She's my flesh and blood, Emmy. I have every right to see her. In fact, I'll take her under my wing. You don't have to worry. She'll be well taken care of. I highly doubt that. I'm appalled, Mom. I never expected you to be that kind of person. Have you always been like this? Is it because you and Emmy don't share any blood ties? How dare you? I thought you were just being tough on Emmy because you wanted to prepare her for parenthood. That's what you told me at least. But that was a lie, wasn't it? And I fell for it. I was such an idiot. I'm sorry that I didn't trust everything Emmy told me earlier. But now I see the truth behind your actions. Bruce? Is that really you? What are you doing with Emmy's phone? She showed me everything and all the horrible things you've been saying to her. Seriously, Mom? I'm shocked. I can't believe it. I wish I could deny it, but I can't risk you harming her any further. Now that I finally realize you were much more cruel to her than I ever thought. It's unforgivable, Mom. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. No, please. This is all a misunderstanding. I can explain everything later. But you have to believe me. I'm your mother, and you know how much I loved you when you were a child. I would never hurt your daughter, and I would never hurt Emmy either. I don't think I can believe you, Mom. Unlike the last time you attacked Emmy, I witnessed what you did today. We all did. There's no justification. I don't want to acknowledge that you're my mother anymore, to be honest. I'm ashamed. I don't think I ever want to look at you again. So I'll probably sever ties with you like Emmy, just so you're aware. What are you talking about, Bruce? You're being deceived by that woman. You can't just desert your mother. After everything you've done? Maybe that's the only solution. You've hurt both my wife and my daughter. That's not something a mother should ever do. Actually, it's not something anyone should ever do. I don't want my child around you. I don't think it's safe for her. If you had no qualms about kicking a pregnant woman, then I'm afraid the same might apply to an infant. You really think I'd kick a baby? Don't be ridiculous. The baby was fine. Nothing happened. There shouldn't be any repercussions. Nothing happened? Are you kidding me? Mom, I'm trying to be civil here, but I don't think we can agree on anything. Please stay away from my family. Bruce, you can't be serious. I'm your mother. You will do as I say. So what if you're my mom? If anything, shouldn't that mean you have even more empathy for what Emmy was going through? You did carry me in your womb, didn't you? I didn't think it would escalate to this level. I thought Emmy was just exaggerating. You know how young girls can be. I thought she was making a fuss. Yeah, right. I don't see any point in continuing this conversation. You're probably just going to come up with excuses. I don't want to listen to them. Don't expect to see me ever again. You're not actually going to tie cuts with me, are you? Bruce, we're family. We can't just leave each other. That doesn't absolve you of being a bad person. Families have obligations too. This conversation is going nowhere. I'll be giving Emmy back her phone, but don't even try to mock her again. It won't help you at all. Bruce, honey, why don't we have a family meeting then? Just come back home after you've done visiting at the hospital. You still need to get all your belongings too. We should talk things over before you make any hasty decisions, right? That home might not be yours for much longer. Bruce is calling his father. You're Emmy, aren't you? How dare you interfere with my family? I will never forgive you for this. You don't have to bother. The feeling is mutual. You'll never forgive me for what I did and I'll never forgive you for what you did. But as long as we don't have to see each other anymore, I think everything will be fine. It seems like Bruce has made up his mind about cutting bonds with you, so we won't have to worry about running into each other by accident either. Why would Bruce be calling his father? He said he's going to explain everything to him. 
And by everything, he means everything that you've done to me and our baby. Oh, dear. Your husband has been kind to me, unlike you. And I still remember the shock on his face when he saw you kicking me in the stomach. After all this, I'm not sure what he'll think of you anymore. Maybe he'll kick you out of the house. I'm sorry for being mean, but I secretly hope that he will. That way we can visit his house with our daughter. That, and also it would be nice to think that you get what you deserve. It'll make me feel better for enduring everything if you get abandoned by both your son and husband. He'll never do such a thing. How long do you think we've been married? He'll take my side. Bruce came back. Apparently, your husband wants to apologize in your place. He's heading to the hospital right now. I think we'll be discussing the future of our household without you. Why am I not involved? This is about me and you. Tell Bruce to pick up his phone. We have some talking to do. No, I'm not going to follow your orders anymore. You're my daughter-in-law. Do as you're told. Daughter-in-law or not, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And don't even try to get all the others involved in this. They all saw what you did. And I don't think anyone will be willing to stand by you. You went too far. Everyone saw what kind of person you actually are. A violent abuser. What? I'm not an abuser. Revenge is sweet, mother-in-law. Especially after everything I had to go through. I'm looking forward to hearing about what happens to you. Oh, Emmy. If what you want is an apology, then I'll give you that. Just let me see my grandchild. Don't let them do this to me. Nope. Not going to happen. Please don't ever contact me again. Our family will be perfectly fine without you. When Bruce revealed the shocking truth about what had been happening between Emmy and Laura behind his back, his father was deeply stunned and dismayed by his wife's actions. He could not believe that she had been so cruel and selfish to harm her own son and daughter-in-law. As he had mentioned earlier, he immediately left his home and drove to the hospital to see his son and daughter-in-law. He felt a surge of guilt and regret for not being there for them sooner. He expressed his sincere apologies for what Laura did, even though he was not responsible for her behavior. He hugged them both and assured them that he loved them and supported them. After having some heartfelt discussions with Bruce and Emmy, Bruce's father made up his mind to get a divorce from Laura. They had been married for a long time but that only gave him more opportunities to notice some warning signs in their relationship. He had always sensed that Laura was unhappy and dissatisfied with their marriage, but he had hoped that things would get better. He had stayed married for the sake of Bruce, but after witnessing what Laura had done to Emmy and their unborn child, he finally decided it was time to end their marriage. He realized that he deserved better than a woman who would hurt her own family. None of the other family members interfered with the decision, but they all agreed with the outcome. They all felt betrayed and disgusted by Laura's actions. A few days later, Laura found herself without a husband, a son, or a home. She had lost everything that mattered to her because of her jealousy and resentment. And just as Emmy had predicted, she never got to see her grandchild because the couple made sure to keep her away from their family. They wanted to protect their child from Laura's negative influence and potential harm.